My name is Steve Watts. I'm an industrial inspector with the Ministry of Labour from Central Region. Today we're at Central Technical High School in downtown Toronto and I'm going to show you some of the things that an inspector would look for doing an inspection in shops and labs in a school. The Occupational Health and Safety Act and the Education Act work together to ensure the safety of both students and staff at the school. Usually, Ministry of Labour inspections are not scheduled and unannounced. Hi, my name is Steve Watts. I'm with the Ministry of Labour. Here to speak to whoever is in charge of health and safety. Okay. Hi, nice to meet you. I'm here today to conduct a uh, proactive inspection uh, of your school, focusing on the um, shops and the chemistry, uh, chemistry rooms or chemistry labs. When I arrive at a school, I ask to speak to the principal and worker health and safety representative. Together, I review with them the Joint Health and Safety Committee minutes, meetings, inspection records, and that appropriate postings are on the health and safety board that is posted where staff have access to it. Required to be posted as per the Act would be a copy of the Occupational Health and Safety Act, a current occupational health and safety policy. When I'm conducting an inspection, I usually take an employer representative and a worker representative with me on the inspection. When inspecting areas where chemicals are stored, we look for things being stored properly, safely, acids and bases, for example, not being stored together in the same uh, cabinet, proper first aid equipment, eye wash stations nearby, fire equipment, extinguishers, fire blankets uh, at close at hand as well. I see you have a fume hood in operation here. The primary uh, concern would be that when you are using the fume hood that you have the sash at the safe level. How often do you inspect your um, fume hood? We get ours checked every year. Great. Thank when you're transporting chemicals to a class, how do you do that? Uh, when a teacher puts in a requisition, what I'll do is I'll put the, the chemicals they requested in bins, mm -hmm. and then I'll put those bins on these carts, um, and then they'll roll it to their classrooms. Chemical mixing rooms need to have proper ventilation. If chemicals are being prepared and transported to classrooms, they need to be properly transported in a method that will not make it possible for them to tip. Spill kits need to be made available as well. And also sharps containers for broken glass in the lab need to be provided as well. Material safety data sheets are required for any WIMIS controlled product and can exist both in paper form and or electronic form. So, uh, good morning everyone. Um, today I'm going to demonstrate for you a really spectacular um, reaction. Uh, I'm going to oxidize sugar. So, as the potassium chloride is melting, it's decomposing into potassium chloride and oxygen. This is water gas and carbon dioxide and a bit of carbon, so not harmful gases at all. If a teacher is conducting an experiment, the expectation is, is that the teacher will be properly prepared with personal protective equipment for both themselves and for the students involved in the experiment and to properly ensure that their methods or procedure that they are using in the experiment have considered all aspects of both health and safety for themselves and for the students in the class. Personal protective equipment can include things such as goggles, face shield, gloves, or uh, aprons. Things that I look for when doing an inspection of machinery in a school would be training, lockout, guards preventing access to a moving part, and the unit's devices being maintained in good condition. Auto shop teachers are required to carry certificate of qualifications when working on any licensed vehicles in their shop class. Artwork in a school setting can include things such as cutting, brazing, welding, and or grinding. When doing hot work, precautions must be taken to ensure that the item, for example, being cut has been properly purged and no hazardous atmosphere exists that could become ignited. Reasonable precautions with the storage of flammable goods and liquids are to have these stored in a flammable cabinet that is well ventilated and adequate grounding and bonding should be ensured. The Occupational Health and Safety Act requires monthly inspections of a workplace. At the conclusion of my field visit, my inspection findings are summarized in a field visit report and if there are any items to be corrected under the Occupational Health and Safety Act, orders may be issued to the employer for uh, contraventions to be corrected. In the school environment, teachers have the opportunity to provide a model workplace and example to the students of today and the future workers of the province of Ontario. Please visit the following websites for more information.